Hello, and welcome to The Coachman. For today's reading, we're going to be going to the other hemisphere, the southern hemisphere, down under, and we're going to be reading a really cool story called Uyan the Curlew. Now, if you don't know what a curlew is, it's a type of bird. For me, it kind of resembles an uh, a flamingo, but a really small brown flamingo. So imagine like a flamingo and I'd say a duck, you know, having a baby. That's pretty much what an erlu. So it has like it has brown feathers, really thin let, and this long, long like pencil like nose. So if you don't know what that is and you want to see it, I would highly recommend check it out. It's C U R L E W. Um, it's a really, it's just an interesting bird. So here we go um, with Oyan the curlew. Bleargal the hawk, mother of Oyan the curlew, said one day to her son, "Go, Oyan." Go out, take your spears, and kill an emu. The women and I are very hungry. You are a man. You need to go out and kill, that we are hung- that we may eat. You must not stay always in the camp like an old woman. You must go and hunt as other men do, lest the women laugh at you. And that is a shame. Stay at home, get laughed at. Go out and you might get still get laughed or you might get killed and still laughed at. But oh, well, it is what it is. Oyan took his spears and went out hunting. But though he went far, he could not get an emu. Yet he dared not return to the camp and face the jeers of the women. Well, could they jeer and angry? Could his mother grow when she was hungry or she was just hangry? Sooner than return empty-handed, he would cut some flesh off his own legs, and this he decided to do. He made a cut in his leg with his combo, and as he made it, he cried out, Yucke! Yucke! in pain. But he cut on saying, Sharper would cut the tongues of the women, and deeper would be the wounds they make if I returned without food for them. And crying, Yucke, yucke! At each stroke of his combo, he at length cut off a piece of flesh and started towards a camp with it. As he neared the camp with his mother, uh, as he neared the camp, his mother cried out, What have you brought us, Oyan? We starve for meat. Come quickly. He came and laid the flesh at her feet, saying, Far did I go, and little did I see, but there's enough for all all tonight. Tomorrow, will I go forth again? The women cooked the flesh and ate it hangrily. Afterwards, they felt quite ill, but, you know, thought it must be because they had eaten too hungrily. The next day, they hurried Uyan forth again, and again he returned bringing, bringing his own flesh back. And again, the women ate hungrily of it, and again, they felt quite ill. First time, shame on you. Second time, well, yeah, second time, shame on me. Then, too, Beergau noticed for the first time that the flesh Uyan brought looked different from emu flesh. She asked him what flesh it was. He replies, what should it be out of the flesh of emu? But Beergau was not satisfied, and she said to the two women who lived with her, Go you tomorrow, follow Uyan, and see whence he gets his flesh. The next day, the two women followed Uyan when he went forth to hunt. They followed at a good distance that he might not notice that they were following. Soon they heard him crying as if he in pain. Yake, 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 nurugege. When they came near, they saw he was cutting the flesh off his own limbs. Before he discovered that they were watching him, back they went to the old woman and told her what they had seen. Soon, Uyan came back, bringing as usual the flesh with him. When he had thrown it down at his mother's feet, he went away and lay down as if tired from the chase. His mother went to him and before he had time to recover his mutilated limbs, she saw that indeed the story of the women was true. Angry was she 
that he had so deceived her and she called loudly for the other two women who came running to her. You were right, she said. Too lazy to hunt for Ibu, cut off his own flesh, not caring that when we unwittingly ate therefore we should sicken. Let us beat him who did us this wrong. That must be bad. I mean, the dude's getting jumped after trying to find him food. Mm, that's rough. The three women seized poor Uyan and beat him. Though he cried aloud in agony when the blows fell on his bleeding legs. When the women had satisfied their vengeance, Birgal said, You, Uyan, shall have no more flesh on your legs, and red shall be, be for forever. Red and long and fleshless. Saying which, she went and with her the other women, Uyan crawled away and hid himself, and never again did his mother see him. But night after night was to be heard a wailing cry of, Boo, you gao gao! Boo, you gao gao! Which meant, My poor red legs, my poor red legs. But though Uyan, the man, was never seen again, a bird with long, thin legs, very red in color under the feathers, was seen often and heard to cry every night. Even as Uyan the man had cried, Boo you gaw gaw! Boo you gaw gaw! And this bird bears always the name of Uyan. Thank you very much, and until next time, take care.